Hey folks, let's learn something new about the oil and gas industry. All right, today we are very, very lucky. Uh, we have Mike Brzezinski. How are you doing, Mike? Good, how are you? Doing awesome. And Mike is not only a wonderful human being, but he's also a listener to the podcast. And Mike did something that, that I just, I love when our viewers, our listeners do. Uh, we reported on the podcast some facts around earthquakes, and quite frankly, I was wrong. And Mike, you were nice enough to reach back out to us. Yeah, I told James that uh, when I when I first talked with him that that when you were talking uh, on the podcast, I was actually yelling out in the car, "No, no, no, don't say that, Mark." Uh, but uh, but look, I, I I felt like you know what you guys had set up a, a culture on your show, and I I think it reflects what you guys truly believe that that you know let's let's make sure we hear from folks if we've got something wrong, reach out to us, let us know. Uh, we're we're happy to hear about it, happy to discuss it, and and I you know I'm here today because uh, you guys believe. In that that uh, you know, and it's and I think the the opinions that you expressed are, are were what the industry felt. I think pervasively, you know, uh, three five years ago, and I think folks have just started to come around that you know, there's enough data now scientifically to be able to say no. Actually, there does appear to be some cases where there's a link between oil and gas operations and earthquakes. Uh, and so let's let's attack it. Let's figure out what's going on, and let's let's try and, and reduce our risks. Let's and try and improve how well the the industry operates. Yeah, and so for people that are watching this on my blog, if you don't listen to the podcast, you have no idea what we're talking about, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, so basically, I reported the fact that there is no correlation between fracking operations, wastewater disposal, and the increase in seismic activity in the U.S. And you reached out and says, Mark, actually, now there is. Let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, sure. So, so, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, uh, even just, you know, five years ago, there, there just wasn't enough data to be able to say. And so I think that's why the industry was was feeling like, look, look I, I have no reason to believe this. You know, please, you know, don't, you know, show me some evidence, right? And so I think that's what folks have collected over the last five years is a lot of evidence to show that, that yes, there are some cases where wastewater disposal in particular has has led to some earthquakes. I think the, the cases where fracking itself has led to earthquakes is is a much smaller uh, amount. I mean, again, I think the the primary thing that we're for focused on right now is trying to to figure out what are the best ways to deal with wastewater disposal such that it that it won't lead to earthquakes. But but even still, I think we're talking still about a small percentage of wells that are producing earthquakes. Uh, but in a place like Oklahoma, I think we don't quite know yet what uh, what the relationship is. There there are so many earthquakes happening in Oklahoma. There are so many wells. Uh, operating in Oklahoma that trying to sort of figure out what's the best way to mitigate it. I, I think all of us are still trying to figure that part out. But in places like Ohio, where I live, there's a there's not as much operation. Uh, and, and so that has made it a little bit easier for us to try and study the problem here, uh, because uh, it's a little bit easier. There's only a handful of earthquakes that have occurred, and we've been able to tie them to specific wells and, and operations. So that has helped us to figure out what's going on. Yeah, and so Mike, uh, let's get a little bit of your background because we don't want our viewers to think you're just some guy off the street that's <laughs> spouting seismic data. So, talk sure. a little bit about yourself. Sure. So, so I'm a I'm a professor at uh, Miami University in Ohio. Uh, I've been here a little over ten years now, and uh, I this is uh, I've been studying earthquakes my uh, whole scientific career. But uh, these kinds of earthquakes is not something that I have spent most of my career on. It was only a handful of years ago now that uh, there was this uh, earthquake uh, about a magnitude four that happened uh, near the Youngstown area in Oklahoma. And so uh, that's a very unusual place to see an earthquake of that size. Uh, there, there are no sort of known faults or any previous earthquakes in that area. Uh, but there, there was a wastewater disposal well in that area. And so people had, by the time that four had happened, people were already concerned that the disposal in that well was producing some smaller events down in the sort of magnitude two range. Uh, and in fact, the, the, the four magnitude four happened the day after they shut down the well. So the, the reason that is, is that, uh, the, the stresses associated with injecting don't just shut off as soon as you turn the well off. So uh, uh, there's still a, a pretty amazing correlation. And one of the studies we've, we've done is, is to look at the volume that was injected into that well and the number of earthquakes, and they track remarkably uh, well between the two. So there weren't any earthquakes. They turned on the well, the earthquake started. How much they injected is how many earthquakes they got. It, it's a remarkable correlation. I, that had me convinced 
at that point that, wow, there, something really is going on here. And, and I was skeptical up to that point, too. Any good scientist should be skeptical uh, of these things. But, but yeah, I mean, the, the data has really changed our minds that there, there is a correlation. And, and it's, you know, it's still not something that happens. I mean, we have hundreds of inj- wastewater disposal wells in Ohio, and only a handful have shown any relationship to seismicity. So that's, that's part of what, what drew me into this. Uh, and and uh, I've, I've been very intrigued by the variety of things that we've seen uh, as we dig deeper into this problem. Yeah, and so it's a good point you brought up. So there is definitely a correlation, but we don't want to alarm people. It's not like yeah. this huge correlation. There yeah. is a correlation. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. with bright minds like you and other uh, scientists out there looking at this, hopefully the oil and gas industry will figure this out and figure out how to mitigate some of this risk. Um, yeah. But but this was just, just an awesome reach out on your part to help educate us. Now you're helping to educate our audience, right? So now sure. we have the facts. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, that's part of why I think what you guys are doing is great, that uh, you're trying to spread good information amongst the community. I mean, I think that's what social media should do in its sort of optimal state is, is to spread good information such that people are not trying to make decisions without enough information. And so I think, that, you know, part of the reason I you know, I'm trying to make a concerted effort to, to let people know about this is I think industry can can deal with this. That uh, I mean, this is a, you know, there are a lot of smart people. We talk about this a lot on the show. There are a lot of smart people in this industry. And so they just need to be aware that this, this is a potential issue, much like any risk there is associated with this industry, right? Leak, you know, from, from you know, tank trucks driving, you know, whether it's, you know, near the well, all kinds of things that people sort of deal with in terms of risk assessment and, and ways to better mitigate it. This is just one of those things. Uh, and so we're just trying to provide enough data so that people can, you know, spend an appropriate amount of time and money to mitigate this problem, right? We don't want to overspend. We don't want to underspend. You know, we want to get it right. And so that's why we're trying to help with that sort of data. Yeah. And with an industry full of engineers and geoscientists, I think if we apply ourselves, we could lick this problem as well and mitigate a lot of that risk. Yeah. So, um, Mike, if people wanted to learn more about you and what you do or, or maybe even understand how maybe you can help their companies, how should, how should people reach out to you? Yeah, so, you know, again, I'm a university professor uh, at Miami, and so uh, that's one of the ways to contact us. But, uh, you know, as we started to deal with uh, industry folks a little bit more, we recognize there are some cases where folks are a little shy to, to deal with somebody at a public university, and I, I fully understand that. Now, for some of the folks, uh, just reading the sort of research that we've done, people can go out and can obtain um, the, the papers that we've published, the manuscripts uh, that have gone through peer review, and that's a difficult process, so uh, <laughs> that's one of the vetting things that we have in our industry is trying to do, to get our studies through peer review. So, so folks, if, if folks are interested in some of the studies that we've done, feel, they should feel free to contact me. You know, just send an email to to our to to me at the university. Uh, but we also recognize that that some folks, you know, would rather you know have a private consultant. And so we've we've come up with a way to deal with that as well. That uh, a colleague of mine here and I have generated an LLC. Um, so we it's a geoseismic uh, analytics, and so we're we're trying to provide an opportunity for folks to get good information, good consulting on how to deal with this problem and do it in a totally private uh, way. And so that's uh, another way that folks can can contact me uh, yeah. is through that that company. So, folks, we'll put links in the show notes so you have to write notes. This way you can just click and either reach out to Mike at his university address or his LLC. Mike, dude, man, thank you so much for being on our show today. Sure. I really appreciate your time. No, no problem, Mike. Uh, I appreciate what you're doing, and uh, thanks for the time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, this is awesome. Hey, folks, I hope this helped. We will see you next time.